SCP-2680 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures The SCP-2688 A population is aware of SCP-2688's anomalous nature, and have agreed to provide information regarding the history and anomalous properties of the region in exchange for being allowed to continue living within it. No information regarding the Foundation, ORIA, or any other group of interest is to be released to SCP-2688-A instances, unless as part of an exchange of information agreement authorized by the current director of Area 58, Area 58 has been established on Buabayan Island near SCP-2688, with additional facilities located on other areas of the island, disguised as a Kuwaiti military base, TTT, description, SCP-2688 is a small farming village located on Buabayan Island, Kuwait, containing a population of 135 people. SCP-2688's current population, hereafter referred to collectively as SCP-2688-A, are culturally and linguistically distinct from other Kuwaiti groups, speaking a Creole with loanwords derived from Koine Greek, Babylonian Akkadian, Imperial Aramaic and Mesopotamian Arabic. SCP-2688 a practice a religion loosely resembling Iron Age Akkadian belief systems, centered on the deity Namu. SCP-2688 a voluntarily remains isolated from the outside world, though passive observation of other groups was common prior to the ORIA establishing control over the region, there are two anomalies affecting SCP-2688. All children conceived within SCP-2688 will display multiple physical malformations of a highly random nature. These malformations include, but are not limited to, extra or missing sensory organs, benign tumors, and teratomash, and malformed or missing internal organs. It is currently unclear whether this anomaly only affects SCP-2688-A or extends to any children conceived within the village. As testing it has been deemed unethical, any liquid water not within a biological organism brought within an approximate 2 km radius of the temple complex will spontaneously transmute into a solution of amniotic fluid, cerebrospinal fluid, gastric acid, and sodium chloride suspended in water. The concentration of the solution will vary. SCP-2688-A instances experience none of the unhealthy effects that would normally occur from coming into contact with this solution, and utilize it in the place of water. This solution has religious significance to SCP-2688-A, and it is often used in libation and purification rituals, a cylinder seal created by the ancestors of SCP-2688-A dates to approximately 200 BCE. In the center of SCP-2688 is a large ruined ziggurat, dated to approximately 4100 BCE-1. Though not itself anomalous, the ziggurat is anachronistic, as it is over a millennium older than any other structure in the area constructed using similar methods. Several anachronistic or formerly anomalous artifacts have been recovered from within the ziggurat, including cuneiform tablets in an unknown language, dated to approximately 4000 BCE-2, and seven mummified human cadavers displaying similar anomalies to those experienced by SCP-2688-A, dated to between 200 BCE and 900 CE, a subterranean system of tunnels, constructed at approximately the same time as the temple complex, extends more than 500 meters beneath SCP-2688. These tunnels have not been mapped in their entirety. The only entrance to these tunnels is from the ziggurat in the center of the village. The use of ground penetrating radar has shown that at the base of these tunnels is an unusually large, anomalously stable underground body of water at least 90 square kilometers in size, based on texts uncovered from the site, it is believed that SCP-2688 was continuously inhabited from approximately 4100 BCE to 1200 BCE, at which point it was abandoned due to invasion from the north by an unknown group. In approximately 300 BCE, the site was resettled by a group of Hellens and Babylonians. SCP-2688-A is descended from these settlers, recovered texts 3, plus Akkadian tablet, excerpt from a creation myth, access granted, dates to approximately 300 BCE. 
recovered from within the ziggurat, Namu who formed all things, made in addition weapons invincible, she spawned monster serpents, sharp of tooth, and merciless of fang, with poison, instead of blood, she filled their bodies, fierce monster serpents she clothed with terror, with splendor she decked them, she made them of lofty stature, whoever beheld them, terror overcame him, their bodies reared up and none could withstand their attack, she set up vipers and dragons, and terrible giants, and fevers, and screaming hounds, and scorpion men, and locusts, and fishmen, and rams, they bore cruel weapons, without fear of the fight, her commands were mighty, none could resist them, plus Akkadian tablet, Teradamanta common series, access granted, dates to approximately 300 BCE. Recovered from the perimeter of the temple complex, fragment missing, if the infant has two ears on the right and none on the left, Namu is in peace, if the infant has two ears on the left and none on the right, Namu is discontented, if the infant has two heads, there will be a fierce attack against the house slash temple of Namu, if the infant is a lion with two heads, there will be discontent in the house slash temple of Namu, if the infant has no eyes, Namu will make the land waste, if the infant has two eyes on the right and none on the left, Namu will birth children and the land will live in peace, if the teeth of the infant protrude from its forehead, dire need will seize the land, if the ears of the infant are on their sides and its head is solid and it has no mouth, Namu will speak humbly to the ruler slash lord of the cosmic waters, if the abdomen of the infant is open, and it has no intestines, there will be famine, if the neck of the infant turns towards its belly and it holds its intestines in its mouth, the land will prosper, fragment missing, plus Greek scroll, liturgical text, access granted, dates to approximately 300 BCE. Recovered from within the ziggurat, fragment missing, is this not the composition of the waters, fragment missing, there was a time in which there existed nothing but darkness and an abyss of waters, imprisoned therein were the most hideous beings, which were produced of a twofold principle. There appeared men, some of whom were furnished with two wings, others with four, and with two faces. They had one body but two heads, the one that of a man, the other of a woman, and likewise several organs both male and female. Other human figures were to be seen with the legs and horns of goats, some had horse's feet, while others united the hindquarters of a horse with the body of a man, resembling in shape the hippocentaurs. Bulls likewise were bred there with the heads of men, and dogs with no eyes, horses also with the heads of dogs, men too and other animals, with the heads and bodies of horses and the tails of fishes. In short, there were creatures in which were combined the limbs of every species of animals. In addition to these, fishes, reptiles, serpents, with other monstrous animals, which assumed each other's shape and countenance, the person who can find them was a woman named Namu, which in the Chaldean language is the Lath, in Greek Thalassa, the sea. All things being in this situation, the Archon of the Cosmic Waters came, and cut the woman asunder, and one half of her he placed in the earth, and the other half in the heavens, and at the same time begot the animals within her, plus Sumerian tablet, letter, access granted, dates to approximately 1200 BCE. Originally recovered by archaeologists in Sahiwal, Pakistan, later purchased by the foundation. Other texts recovered nearby indicate it was written within SCP-2688 and was to be transported to somewhere in Southeast Asia, a reproduction of the cylinder seal impression found at the bottom of the tablet, to daughter Ninshubur of the Keepers of the Mind, servant of Mekanu IV, say, thus speaks Father Zayasudra, priest slash lord of the house slash temple of Namu, servant of Mekanu, to my daughter, your father bears ill news of home, the door is broken, the lock is wrenched, the dead have been brought up, and the dead outnumber the living, the king of Lachish sets aflame his own people, but he will not stem the red tide, the king of Ugarit abandons his country to itself, but he will not be spared, the sky beyond Eridu's star lies open, the cosmic waters pour forth, the sorcerer king rises from a rotting world slash foreign land slash afterlife, the lord of the cosmic waters follows his command, 
our brothers and sisters in Kapta revive march to the end of all things, but they may not return, the Lord of the Cosmic Waters seeks the house slash temple of Namu, your father knows not why, if the house slash temple of Namu is taken, the blood of Mekanu will be lost, and the blood of Mekanu must not be lost, whatever occurs, we must defend what remains of the light, discovery, and containment, in 1955, the Office for the Reclamation of Islamic Artifacts became aware of the existence of SCP-2688 and attempted to establish a presence within it, an action which SCP-2688A responded to violently. This conflict lasted for 13 hours, after which the ORIA were able to forcibly take control of the region, in 1991 Foundation operatives conducted a raid on SCP-2688 and were able to capture it from the ORIA. Individuals with level 4 or higher security clearance may access document 2688 Aleph for details on the operation, interview log 2688A5, plus access restrict TEDO level 4 slash 2688 and Citra Acre personnel, access granted, interviewed. SCP 2688A5, ALAP Arus Balos, Interviewer, Dr. Amadi, Forward, SCP 2688A5 is a 73 year old male, possessing a small orbital tumor in the place of its left eye, and an abnormally enlarged right orbit accommodating an additional non functional vestigial eye located approximately 2 cm above its right eye. SCP-2688-85 acts as both a religious and secular authority within SCP-2688-A, having been chosen by the previous Balos to act as its successor. Additionally, SCP-2688-A5 is one of the only 10 literate SCP-2688-A instances. Interview was conducted in the Creole spoken by SCP-2688-A, begin log, Dr. Amadi, good morning, Balos. I would like to ask you a few questions about the history of your village. Let's start with the obvious. Why did your people migrate here, SCP-2688-A5, my people were led here long ago. We were gathered in the north and sent to find the land of Dilmun, Dr. Amadi, could you clarify further, SCP-2688-A5, unintelligible muttering, Doctor. Admadi, speak up, please, SCP-2688-A5, you will not understand, Doctor. Amadi, if you don't think you can adequately explain the history of this village, we can always find another member of your society too, SCP-2688-A5, visibly agitated there is no need to call upon the ignorant. I will attempt to enlighten you, though you will not understand, Doctor. Amadi, all right then. Continue, SCP-2688-A, my ancestors, the initiates of the Ionic Mysteries, were gathered by Karsis Tulva, vizier of Tursa of the Cosmic Waters. They were sent to settle the once prosperous land of Dilmun, in the name of our immortal father. When they arrived at this place, my ancestors rejoiced, for a reward had been prepared for them, Dr. Amadi, a reward, SCP-2688-A5, this village lies upon a diseased god. A rotten creature, whose fevered mumblings shape our flesh. It was a gift beyond measure. We may be as flies to the gods, but flies make feasts of the sick and dying, Dr. Amadi, a god, SCP-2688-A5, Namu, Thalath, Tiamat. She goes by many names. She whispers into the wombs of our people and molds the flesh within, telling us her secrets and her desires. We will feast on her rotting form, and in return we will birth her children into the world, exalt her and raise her into power, Dr. Amadi, and what will happen then, SCP-2688-A5, I, I do not know. But I am certain that my people will be as gods. Do you have any more questions? Or may I go, Dr. Amadi, just a little longer. My organization wants to explore the caves beneath your temple. We just wanted to make sure that is acceptable to you first. May we enter, SCP-2688-A5, 
we do not descend into the caves below. The old texts spoke in vague terms of a great temple in the center of our village, but not until the Persians dug it up did we know it existed. It belongs to Namu, not us. If you wish to enter, we will not stop you, though she may, end log, closing statement, as permission to enter the cave system beneath the ziggurat has been granted, exploratory efforts are to be undertaken as soon as preparations are complete. As SCP-2688 has been confirmed by SCP-2688-A5 to be Sarkic in origin, foundation, and GOC representatives of project, Citraikra will oversee future containment and research of SCP-2688, exploration, plus access restrict Teto level 4 slash 2688 and Citraikra personnel, access granted, 12 slash 07 slash 1999, Dr. Amadi, Area 58 Anthropologist and Assyriologist, Dr. Singh, Area 58 Biologist, Agent Albiadi, Member of MTF Zayton 9 Mole Rats, and Dr. Morrison, GOC Special Observer Archaeologist, enter the temple complex at the center of SCP-2680. Agent Albiadi is equipped with a 6-hour P226 sidearm at the suggestion of Dr. Morrison, the walls and ceiling of the cave are completely coated with a lining of thin muscular hydrostats between 15 and 60 cm in length, which dangle loosely. These organisms have been collectively designated SCP-2688-B. After approximately three hours of uneventful exploration of the cave system, the expedition team discovers and enters a cylindrical chamber approximately 30 m in diameter and 5 m tall, constructed out of fired brick, through one of six arches spaced equidistant from each other. The walls of the chamber display bas reliefs depicting mythological scenes, the majority of which are rendered incomprehensible by significant damage from SCP-2688-B. One relief remains mostly intact, depicting a large female figure and six male figures. Four of the male figures are depicted holding, respectively, a bundle of grain, a clay tablet and stylus, a shield studded with bronze discs and a spear, and a crown. The remaining two male figures have been almost entirely destroyed by SCP-2688-B, but presumably at some point held in additional two objects. The female figure is depicted holding in one hand the winged gear motif also found in the cylinder seal impression of the Sumerian tablet recovered from Sahiwal. The floor of the chamber is covered by a uniform layer of iron oxide flakes approximately 2 cm thick, several small, round clay tablets with short messages in early dynastic Sumerian cuneiform are found strewn about the floor of the main chamber. The tablets display signs of having been heavily reused. The expedition team is able to translate of one of the tablets, which takes the form of a short prayer, May Namu, Blood of Mikanug, Make my writing stylus beautiful, may she lead me to correct the mistakes in my practice tablets. On the opposite side of the tablet the prayer is repeated in different handwriting, with the addition of several grammatical, calligraphical, and spelling errors. At this time audio contact is lost with the expedition team, and camera feeds becomes heavily corrupted. Recovered frames depict unidentified green limbless entities with human facial features. Other recovered frames depict a black viscous substance dripping onto the arm of Dr. Singh, causing rapid anaphylaxis and the development of several tumorous growths. At this time the helmet cameras of all four personnel cease transmitting entirely. All members of the expedition are considered Kia, 13 07 1999, approximately 12 hours after loss of contact. Agent Albiadi's helmet camera begins functioning again, and though Site Command is unable to send messages to her, audio from her radio is received. Agent Albiadi is within a large, cavernous space of indeterminate size, the majority of which is taken up by a large body of water. Ripples and waves are visible, despite an apparent lack of wind. The coloration of the water indicates that it is affected by SCP-2688 secondary transmutative anomalous property. Despite being underground, the horizon is visible in the distance. 
the sound of waves and what is believed to be Agent Albiotis breathing can be heard, interrupted intermittently by the sound of organic material scraping on stone in the distance, abruptly, the sound of metal scraping causes Agent Albiotai to turn her head away from the water's edge. A humanoid, resembling a Middle Eastern bearded male with crude bronze prosthetic modifications to the arms and eyes, becomes visible. Fleshy tendrils travel from the floor to within the cybernetics, and its facial features are heavily distorted by the growth of several large gloromas. The humanoid appears unconscious, but is breathing and blinking rapidly. Agent Albiadi begins slowly walking towards the humanoid while it sits up and outstretches its right arm as far as its tendrils will allow. Agent Albiadi kneels down and allows the humanoid to touch its thumb to her head. At this time, Agent Albiadi begins speaking in Babylonian Akkadian, audio transcript, translated, she will die. It is not my fault. Yes it is. My hand was forced. I am sorry. Namu lead you here because she wants to kill you and because she wants you to live, I was not always as I am. Once I was Sayasudra. That has ended and now the blood is sick. No I am sick. No. She is sick. Yes. We are all sick. I am confused. Who are you? Namu now begins to roar and smile, and her deeds are evil. Our minds are hollowed out and we can feel it. My people, the priests of this temple, are gone. They fled or joined when the red tide came. The gods are dead or mad. Terish Kigal claws and shadows. Nick Kesai hides from the world. Inki is fragmented. The Lamasu have no masters. Zayasudra cannot think and cannot live and cannot rest, but you can slow the flood. Yes. Karsis Tulva sees you. The fishmen are his eyes. I am his eyes. He will sacrifice the city above to awaken Namu. You must hurry and prepare for the mingling of the waters. I am sorry, he sees you now. The ones above too. Go, at this time Agent Albiadi's helmet camera and radio cease functionality. No further contact with the unidentified humanoid has been recorded. Further exploration of SCP-2688 has been postponed indefinitely. All members of the expedition team are once again considered Kia. Footnotes, 1. Thermoluminescence dating is used to date most SCP-2688 artifacts, 2. All other cuneiform tablets date to the late 4th millennium BCE at their oldest, 3. A full list of texts recovered from SCP-2688 can be found in document 2688 4. It is believed that these five signs, dmi.ka.an.nu are meant to be interpreted phonetically. It is possible they represent a transliteration of a proper noun from another language. 5. This word refers to Crete, but in this context it may represent the Aegean as a whole.